Hello and welcome. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and you are watching the Vokta Gaming Carnage Specials, episode number five. So, first up, allow me to introduce to you our purple Zerg. He is, of course, a member of the UK's Team Carnage. His name is Stolen Sheep. And he faces off today against our orange Protoss. His name, his name, his name is Vi High Gain. So, Team Vi versus Team Carnage in the form of Stolen Sheep versus High Gain. This is from the ESL UK qualifiers. Now, the winners of each of the qualifiers, the people who qualify, will go on to the UK nationals and will be casted by none other than Artosis and Tasteless. That is right, Tastosis is coming to the UK. So, big, big congrats to the ESL for getting that put together for us. So, this is my first chance to watch Stolen Sheep play as a member of Team Carnage. I've heard really, really good things about him. I know he performs quite well in online tournaments, so it'll be great to see how well he does against Vi's high game. Now I can tell you that unfortunately Stolen Sheep did not qualify at this qualifier. But I do not know the result of this game itself. I haven't actually watched the replay yet, so this sh should be fun. It's actually been a while since I've casted, which is really weird. Like for a year, I've casted five times a week, minimum. Doing stuff like Best of the Best and now working for SCV Rush. But because of a series of unfortunate circumstances, I haven't actually casted anything in about seven, eight days. Oh, nice pylon block on the hatchery there. Going to force Stolen Sheep to take this drone down to the third base and make one here, which pretty much forces Zerg to go early three base. And of course, High Gain sees it, so he knows exactly what's going on. He is expanding himself, doing the Forge Fast Expand which is pretty much standard for every Protoss against Zerg. It is the build that they should be doing. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, just to introduce you, if you are new to the Carnage Esports YouTube, I am the in-house caster for Team Carnage's StarCraft II division. They're a group of fantastic players. We recently just had a clear out of kind of the, uh, the less active players. And now, pretty much, we have the cream of the crop. We have guys like Stolen Sheep, we have guys like Pad, uh, Lemony Tang, the Terran player, we have MX5, who's a pro player, and we have Jimmy, who recently placed in the top 12 at the latest iSeries event in the UK, down in Telford, I believe that was. So, they are a really good, strong UK lineup, and it is my pleasure to get to cast their games for you and for this YouTube channel little bit about me, of course, like I said, I'm the in-house caster for Team Carnage. I'm also one of the regular casters for the EU version of SC Vera, who hold tournaments every week. We have the BSG tournament every Wednesday, we have the Masters Brawl every, uh, every other Tuesday, and we have the Platinum Diamond League every Thursday for EU, I believe that is. I haven't had the chance to cast that yet, unfortunately, but hopefully I will in the future. As well as that, I'm also present as the voice of Manchester Barcraft every time we run an event. So if you want to know more on that, please come check out the Manchester Barcraft Facebook page, which of course is just uh, facebook.com forward slash Manchester Barcraft. So we have some Zerglings out from Stolen Sheep. Going to try and run past this Zeller. Uh, don't go too far. Interesting. I want to see exactly what he saw there. Nothing, in fact. Hmm don't like that. I'd have preferred Stolen Sheep to have actually come up and at least seen the Forge Fast Expand and seen the wall off. I think it's worth potentially losing a Zergling in fact, that's all you're going to lose at most because uh, Zealots are not very fast even compared to non-speed Zerglings. High Gain meanwhile is adding a Robo Facility off the back of just one gate so I think he wants to get some Observers out uh, soon or this could perhaps be the Sentry and Mortal build, we do have two more gas going down, could well be that. This is after I believe the Observer change so they do come out 10 seconds quicker and now this Stalker does finish off the last of those Zerglings giving 
high gain, somewhat map control with just one stalker at the moment. Of course, more Zoglings are on the way. Six more Zoglings about to pop out. Oh, and a plus one weapon this early. I mean, you have the forge. You may as well get it. Is he chronoing it, though? No, he's chronoing the gateway to get out sentries. Oh, this really could be the sentry immortal timing attack coming out. What's going to come out of here first? And it doesn't tell us definitively because you can still get an observer out. But he's waiting now. He has the money for an observer, so I think we're going to see an immortal at 250. Nope, he is going to go observer first. Okay, you do have the time for that. So we'll wait and see. Oh, he's going off to three base. Ah, this is not the immortal timing attack then. I mean, you can do it off three base, but it hits later and a lot less hard. So I imagine this will just be used for observers for now. First observer already finished. Wow. That really is quick. That build time is tiny. We have three more gateways going down, so going up to four gate, pretty standard. Only sentries at the moment, but that could just be for defence. So up to three sentries now. We'll basically see what comes out of these three gates. We do have an immortal though. Hmm. More sentries on the way. This is this is confusing me. This could still be the immortal. Five more gates being added. Ah, uh, and plus one armor. I really feel like high gain is going to go for a timing attack. So we, what we're going to do is take a quick look at what stolen ship is going to do to defend it, and that's brilliant. Spire going down. Lair is already up. By the time this hits, he should hopefully be able to get a few meters out. And once meters are out, it pretty much stops all this because obviously immortals cannot shoot up. It's really nice to see. If you go roaches against that attack you pretty much lose. It's really, really hard to hold off. And I like this from Stolen Sheep. Going up to four base very quickly and adding a macro hatch as well. This is the kind of play I like to see from a Zerg. Super, super macro. And it's nice to see off a UK player as well because UK players often struggle with that. Um, they often tend to macro up quite slowly despite the fact they don't really do any attacks. It's very, very strange. Mmm, Twilight Council on the way. So, high gain. I mean, could just be used for the upgrades. Mm, he doesn't have enough stalkers to bother getting blank. He's going to do this sentry immortal push, you know. But he's only got five sentries? Yeah, five sentries and two immortals. That's not enough. You've, you've got six muters on the way. Six muters kill that. Like, stone dead. There is, as of yet, no forward pile on it either. Yeah, he's going to get some creep, but to be honest, there's enough Zerglings here to do a lot of damage. If he can kill some sentries. Oh man, nice force build, but it's not going to be enough if he loses some sentries here. Okay, that was nice though, but that's all of his energy used up pretty much. There's not a huge deal of energy left on these stalkers. Uh, on these sentries, rather. A few half health. But yeah, that time, I mean, the Muse are out. That attack is over. That was really late. Second Spire on the way. So it looks like Stolen Sheep. Well, okay. He wants to do some heavy, heavy Muter because he's going to get double upgrades. We've got Blink on the way, though. So with some Stalkers out, that will help. And with Templar Archives as well, Storm, really effective against the Muters, as is as are Archons, rather. Photon Cannon's going down. The Muters can just power through them, though. There are a lot of Muters here. And there's only going to be one cannon fully gets up. It gets off a couple of shots, but nothing much. The stalkers are back now, yep. So that meter attack is done for. Sorry about the uh, the lack of intensity there. I was thoroughly confused by the way this cannon was firing. For a second on my screen, it looked like it was attacking its own probes. And I got very confused. I'm just wondering what my graphics settings are. I'm wondering if they drop slightly. I'm experiencing, hopefully this isn't coming through to you, but I'm experiencing some frame rate issues. Hopefully it's recording just fine. What a strange day this has been when it comes to recording. Drones now transferring down. Perhaps going to go forward and make some spine crawls, or he could just transfer down. Yep, he's just going to transfer down. I see no shades. Of spine crawlers, huge massive zerglings here that he can't really do a lot with at this point in time. That is an absolute massive. Just go to the unit sta uh, counting station. He has 77 drones, 
So he's at about the max amount of drones you want. You want about 77 to 80. In the earlier game, you can, at this point, go all the way up to 100 to really boost your economy. But eventually, you're going to want to cut that back to about 70 to 80. And he's got 60 Zerglings. Really, that's all the units he needs at the moment. He wants to be getting tech up. As you see, we have a Bailing Nest Infestation Pit and a ton of upgrades on the way. Interesting, we have two Spires, but only getting one Flyer upgrade at this moment in time. Was that that second spire can't have been a mistake? I mean, it could just be a backup spire, but he could be getting fire attacks level two at this moment. He's got the money for it. As it is, he's going in with a ton of zerglings, though, forcing the probes to be pulled out. All the probes gone from the main and the natural. Forces going down. The zerglings will die, but that is a brilliant uh, trade. Oh man, if he even gets the nexus, that's pretty huge. That is money to rebuild, and that's money he doesn't want to waste. Yep, that Nexus dies, so nice attack there by Stolen Sheep. I still don't know why he's not getting that flower upgrade, though. I mean, that's probably why his, his mind was entirely on that attack. His multitasking perhaps not quite up to it. So we see these muters again going to be doing some pressure, perhaps on the fourth base. Do we have cannons up? We have a load of cannons there, though. So perhaps going to just mix in with uh, the main force again of Stolen Sheep. He does have the supply advantage. We have High Gain moving out there. He has a Warp Prism as well. Warping in Millions perhaps wants to move out and do an attack. But this huge flock of muters is just going to fly in here and pick off this Nexus in just a few seconds. Incredible. And now the probes are all going to die. Oh, kill the Forge. Please kill the Forge. The Forge is in the middle of upgrading, he doesn't even cancel the upgrade, so the Forge dies and the upgrade with it. And now the meters are so mobile, they can escape. High gain blinks forward, but Stolen Sheep doing a ton of damage, doesn't manage to force a cancel on the Nexus, but does escape with pretty much all of his meters intact. Brilliant play by Stolen Sheep this, and now he's getting that fire upgrade. Pathogen Glands is done, so these Infestors are going to pop with energy. Stolen Sheep is controlling this game. And let me tell you now, Team Vi are really, really good. They have players that feature in all the top UK tournaments. Players that qualify for TSLs. So they are no slouches. That uh, TSL, of course, is the Team Liquid StarCraft League. They are currently doing qualifiers for their fourth. Stolen Sheep going to come down into the third, but there are a lot of cannons here. And a perfectly placed storm goes down on all those meters. A lot of them are injured now. He needs to get the hell out of there. But no, he's just going to throw away these meters. going to kill even more probes. Perhaps take down a cannon. I don't know if that was the best trade. Because now, we have high gain making a push. Let's look at the unit carrying station. Only 30 meters and 9 infested. It's mostly a zergling army. This could be tough to hold off for stolen sheep. In fact, it looks like this hatchery is definitely going to die. And some of the drones are going to go down as well. We have a huge force here though. Hopefully what Stolen Sheep has can hold off the army of Vi's high gain. Nice storm goes down on those Zerglings there, but all the Infestors, all the Infestors with the Fungal, good storms, but none of the Infestors are dead. That Ground Carapace upgrade, well worth it, and all of these units being Fungal now. If this army dies, high gain really doesn't have a lot to get back into this game with, but he has managed to hit Stolen Sheep all the way down to 117 supply. Stolen Sheep though has enough of an advantage that he can afford to trade cost inefficiently. Zealots are going down. In fact, there's nothing left to stop these two muters from picking off units. The probe is sacrificed so the rest can escape. Let's just take a quick look. We are Look at that. 41 workers killed from Stolen Sheep over the course of this game. But, uh, but high gain, getting a lot of unit kills down as I hit the wrong key because I am having a terrible day. I've had about three hours sleep a night since Thursday last week. It is currently Thursday this week. I am so tired, like you wouldn't believe. And another great storm there goes down on those Zerglings. But again, he can afford to throw away these Zerglings. They're so cheap to remake. We have a hive on the way. We have two more hatcheries going down. One here and one to replace the one taken down earlier. Once that hive is up, he can transition into either Blue Lords or Ultralisks. 
excuse me while I yawn, and then realise I've had the replay counter open all frigging game, and it's too late for me to go back and re-record again, because I've got three more games to cast today after this, and it's already 4pm. And these games feel like they go on forever. Not because the players are bad, I'm just so used to casting the Korean aggressive style, or of course the, uh, the bronze, silver, gold style, where games tend to be over with ridiculous pushes. Uh, whereas instead, these kind of level guys in Europe tend to be a lot more macro focused, tend to go for the long game, you rarely see a game end in the first 20 minutes. Like, look at this. We are 20 minutes into this game, and only now do we have a robotics support bay going down, which allows him to build Colossi. Unfortunately, that's really late. Like, it's super effective against the Ling Infestor army, but Broodlords are going to hit, because we have a hive. If, if Stolen Sheep is as good a player as I think he is... Oh, even better, Ultralisk Cavern. I say even better, I mean he doesn't know about the Colossi, obviously. If he did, he'd probably go Broodlords. Ultralisk though, is still really good against Colossi because they're so large and bulky that they cannot be hit much by the splash damage. I prefer Broodlords, of course, because Colossi cannot shoot up. We have a couple of Zealots attacking this bottom base, but the Zerglings are going to take it down. No problems whatsoever. Doesn't really affect Stolen Sheep. He's got a huge bank up right now. He was waiting for that Ultralisk Cavern to hit. Let's see how well he's hitting his eggs. He could do with perhaps a few more queens. He is hitting his injects on these hatcheries. But of course we do have a hatchery here that is not having injects hit on it. We do have a hatchery here without any injects on it. And of course the macro hatch as well. Could be getting injects, so he could be getting more units out. And here comes the Great Aspire. Okay, so he's ready. He's uh, readying himself for a Broodlord transition. One round of Ultras, a huge attack, and then come back with Broodlords and absolutely stomp your opponent. There we see the money drop as all these Infestors are being made. Uh, all these Ultralisks, rather, are being made now. I don't know why I'm calling them Infestors. Adrenal glands, adrenal glands, and then all the uh, the ground and melee attack. And armor. I am screwing this up so bad. I may even put off the rest of the Carnage videos until tomorrow. I am that tired. But we'll see. Maybe I will get my act together. Maybe I will drink some more caffeine. That could be the plan. High gain. Really, not a lot he can do. He's trying to take this fourth base. He's got a couple of Colossi out. But if we go to the unit counting station, we'll see. Stolen Sheep just has a lot more units. Two Immortals and one Colossi. I mean, the seven High Templar will help. If he can get some really good storms off on the Infestors. But he has nothing to really deal with these Ultralisks. And now Stolen Sheep is going to just push forward. The Zerglings are being utterly decimated by those storms. But the Ultras, man. The Ultras are there, ready to do the damage. And this army of High Gain is just going to melt under the force of these Ultras. Nice fungals hold them in place so they can't kite the ultras. This fourth base of high gates is going to die. The Colossus dies. And all the ultras are still alive. We still have seven ultras from the initial nine. And look at this, he's already building nine corruptors, getting fire attacks level three on the way. And fire carapace level two. So he's already ready to transition into Broodlords. High gain, I'm afraid, at this point does not stand a chance against Team Carnage's stolen sheep. Quick note, wonderful creep spread. Really have to say that. Over half the map covered at the 24 minute. I mean, if he goes much further, he's he's covering this fourth base that High Gain's trying to take. So that's really nice use of the Queens. Like I say, would like to have seen a few more injects, but now he does have Queens at these bases. Still no one at this one, but he's doing his best. Trying to hit as many injects as possible to keep getting these units out. As it is, he's pretty much using all of his money anyway, so he doesn't need to worry too much about injects. We have Broodlords, eight of them on the way. Once they join this army, that is going to be GG for high gain, I would imagine. He's got two Archons out. Mothership Core, uh, what do they call it at the moment? Fleet Beacon is on the way. It will be a Mothership Core in Heart of the Swarm. Can you tell I've been readying myself for Heart of the Swarm beta? God knows when it will come out though. Oh, first Ultra dies to the hands of Stolen Sheep because what that allows you to do is send the Broodlings uh, brood out earlier. 
and bait those storms. The Ultras, of course, here just a tank right now for the Broodlords. Any damage they do is incidental, but the Broodlings are going to destroy the Archon. The Flyer attacks plus three, adding damage to that first hit, and of course then the melee attacks three, doing the subsequent damage, and there's really not a lot high gain can do about it. This fourth base gets cancelled. Again, he cannot put it up. High gain is being pushed all the way back. He blinks forward. He gets under these Broodlords. Now, this is nice. If he can kill all of these, he has bought himself some time to try and establish some kind of army. Stolen Sheep turns, but it's too late. He's losing a ton of Broodlords at this point. That there was no need for him to lose. He completely overextended. He lost all his gun spot. And now he's going to lose the Infestors as well. This is bad play from Stolen Sheep. Losing all of his units utterly unnecessarily. Luckily for him, Highgain does not have much, an ar much of an army. He will be able to... He will not be able, rather, to move out on the map and do any more real damage. Perhaps push forward, try and take out some creep tumors with this Observer. Allowing himself to take this fourth base finally. Three more Broodlords on the way. Four Infestors, four more Broodlords now. But that's not enough. You need some Zerglings with that. How many Zerglings do you have now? Only three at the moment. You need something else. You need something to tank the damage. The Infestors hold things in place. The Broodlords with the Broodlings kill them. But at the end of the day, you need something to tank the hits from the Stalkers. You need something to stop those Stalkers from blinking forwards and right now he does not have that excuse me I, my throat is drying out as well I have to take a drink this could well go down as the worst most tired cast ever but never mind because what we're seeing here and honestly it deserves better from me because this is good play from Stolen Sheep. He had a bad moment there where he lost most of his army through overextending. But that can happen to even the best of players. As it is now, he is re-establishing his army. He's getting three more Broodlords with this composition. But a Mothership now is on the way. High gain has given himself enough time to get the Mothership out. With enough Archons, that Mothership could prove to be Stolen Sheep's undoing. And it's a real shame because Stolen Sheep, at one point, had this game won. A little bit of unit control, maybe not throwing all those Ultralisks away to the Storms. As I do the longest yawn ever, oh my god. Seven more Corruptors on the way, ah, unnecessary. You really don't need any more Broodlords. 8 is kind of enough. 8 to 10 Broodlords is enough to kill pretty much anything. What you need now is just to stop the Stalkers from blinking underneath them. Nice timing on the Overseer here. The Mothership is, of course, out and will be cloaking units. Both players are really backing off. We finally have Flyer Carapace level 3 on the way. See, 4 more Broodlords. That's going to take up to 12. 12 is really the upper limit because the Stalkers are going to kill them anyway. Uh, along with the Archons, especially if you toilet them. A couple of creep tumors trying to go up, but are getting taken down. Pylon's going down at that top base for high game, but he cannot drop the Nexus because of this annoyingly burrowed Zergling. Always good to deny it, means he has to send an Observer all the way up here just to take this down. Or, in fact, Build two cannons within range. Man, if I'm stolen sheep, I get this up and I push it a little bit backwards so it's just out, outside of the range of the effect here, uh, of the cannon's effective range. Now, this is nice from stolen sheep. Pushing his uh, rows of spine crawlers forward to hold a defensive position down the middle. It gives them somewhere to retreat to. Should things start to go wrong in this battle, we do have a few corruptors left to help kill these colossi faster and of course help kill the mothership. Now down go the first of the storms. Those are some nice storms. The corruptors getting hit, but honestly the plus three or the plus two carapace at the moment is allowing him to weather those storms and now he can just pull back. That was not the time for him to engage. He's gonna pull high game. He's 
He's going to pull high gain into these spine crawlers. High gain unable to do anything right now. High gain is really stuck, and we have 40 lings in production. That's what I wanted to see out of stolen sheep. A lot more lings. Once he gets some lings with this to stop the stalkers from blinking forwards, like this army is going to be perfectly safe. And here they come. What these spine crawlers have done is basically held high gain back while Stolen Sheep was able to get those lings out. We have one more Colossus on the way for high gain, but one more Colossus is not going to make the difference here. Broodlings going out now, doing a little bit of shield damage to these Colossi. And it means the Colossi cannot move forward now without the Stalker or Archons. Excellent play here by Stolen Sheep, holding it back longer and longer. Oh, sending the lings up to the top. Brilliant move. Going to force a cancel at the very least on this Nexus. And he can even get the Protoss Death Ball to move back up to the top now. And out of this defensive position. It's really out. The Stalkers blink back. Now is the time, Stolen Sheep. <clears throat> now is the time to attack. The Stalkers are all out of position up at this top base. So the Broodlords are pretty much protected. And a burrow from those Zerglings. Oh, Highgain cannot hit them till the Observer is there. There is no Observer anywhere near. If the Observer goes with, the Mothership Cloak doesn't do anything. The Stalker's forced to retreat. That fifth base for Highgain does not go up. I just really wish Stolen Sheep would at some point attack. There's no gain in him waiting now. He's not getting anything. He's not getting any upgrades. He's not getting any more units out. Adding four Broodlords, again, unnecessary with the amount he already has. I mean, there was no need to make those extra Corruptors to begin with. And he's still got a ton of Corruptors left. Going almost full air. When really, there is no need to. He's getting this additional Hattery, which is a good idea. Finally, all these Zerglings do die. And Highgain is going to try and establish that fifth. One Zergling, unfortunately, left. Kills his own pylon. Seems a bit harsh. And now we have a photon cannon building that is not, in fact, in range of a pylon. Not the best choice there by high game, perhaps. But we do have a small engagement going on. It looks like perhaps Stolen Sheep gonna push forward, throwing down some infested Terrans. Corrupt is trying to snipe the Colossi. Gets one. Storm's going down absolutely everywhere though. Bungle's going down on the Stalkers. It looks like Stolen Sheep may have this, but those are some good storms. And feedback's going down. All those infestors dying. Where is the ground force? Finally, Zerglings reaching this to tank some of this damage to stop these Broodlords from being hit. That's what he needed in the first place to stop those infestors going down. High gain can't hold it though. High gain, GG's. And we see Team Carnage's Stolen Sheep go one game up in the ESL qualifier. That is the only game from that I'm bringing because it is a really good game. The other games, unfortunately, not quite so much fun to watch. And we want to bring you only the best content here on Team Carnage, on the Carnage Esports YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching this. I, I really hope you enjoyed the great game. I do apologize for the level of my casting there. I was going to add three more Carnage games, but I think perhaps I'm going to lay off that now until tomorrow morning. We shall see how I feel, perhaps after a bit of dinner. Thank you very much for watching us, and I will see you all very shortly with more from Carnage Esports.